Hello, and welcome to this Creating Analytics in WKO training series. This is Lesson 6, Creating a Data Series in an Athlete. Okay, based on um, Lesson 5, going over some of the basics in a workout and doing it in a demonstrative way, I'm going to do the same in this one. So jumping over to WKO, um, I already have my whiteboard selected. Remember my point, we supplied a whiteboard as a dashboard in views so that you have a place to work on charts. You need to build all new charts within a dashboard. So I'm going to use my whiteboard dashboard, which right now is nice and clean and blank. To start a new chart, I'm going to click the down arrow. I'm going to create a new chart. I'm going to look at my chart options, but I'm just going to select custom. Once I do that, it's going to drop a chart and the configuration box. I'm going to close this configuration box because I can always come back to it and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to make this chart as large as I can for my screen size so that you can watch as I'm working on it. If I hover over the, the top bar, I get my down arrow and by simply selecting configure this chart, it reopens my chart configuration. I want to name this chart so that I don't forget what it was and I'm going to name this test video demo. Now I could put a tags in this and some other items. I'm not going to tag it now. Um, but let's say I did actually. I could tag it test um, and that will remember the tag test. Now I'm going to set, do I want a chart or a report? I typically recommend if you're new to chart building, build things in a report first. It's easier to see what's happening and then flip it to a chart. But I'm going to do it in a chart just for demo today. I also want to set the zoom and the overlap, which I taught in an earlier lesson. I'm going to leave them both on zoom and overlap for now. In more advanced sessions, I'm going to show you how you can manage those factors, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Default size, I don't want any smoothing. All right, now my chart is ready to go. What I need is a data series. So again, this is your data series and information box. So if I click the plus bottom at the bottom, with a plus at the bottom of that box, I get a new data series. I'm going to stay on the demo uh, examples of power. So I'm going to name this power. You know what? I'm going to set this to a bar because I used lines in my um, last example. And all I need with a bar is to select a color. So I'm going to click on color and I'm going to use the WK05 palette and I'm going to choose the color for power. Okay, now my chart is ready to be built. Building on what we learned in the workout video, I want power, right? I should just type power. So I type power and nothing happens. Well, why is that, right? So when you're building charts at the athlete level, and it's why I always do the demo to start at the workout level, you have to remember that if you're pulling a data channel, you have to tell that, or you have to apply or tell that data channel what you want it to do. So if I'm just saying power at the athlete level, right, this athlete has, I don't know, what is it, 12 years of data? Am I just pulling up all the power to one number? Am I doing something, you know, uh, else with it? So you have to tell it what to do. So let's tell it what to do, right? I'm going to, remember my how to build a chart. You always start from the inside out. The core of what I want is power. So if that's the core, I just want power, I'm going to put it in parentheses so that I can do something with it. And what I want, right, if I think about what I'm really looking at the athlete level is I want to pull up the average daily, right? So I'm going to put that AVG in front of power again, let it do some thinking, and now as you can see, it's brought up average daily power. Now this was different when I used average power in the workout, right? That was second by second data. Now at the athlete level, because this is what the athlete is for, it's showing me a 90 day range and it's giving me a bar for each day's worth of average power. Okay, cool. So that's great. So I have a simple average power. But you know, I didn't want to just know average power. I wanted to know how hard this athlete was going. Um, you know, what were the good hard days? So, okay, what if I, I'm going to do, watch this little trick, right? I'm going to copy this and go see. So I'm copying it. I'm going to start a new data series and I'm going to say average power. So I'm going to just paste it. Now this data series, because of the order, is behind, right? I'm going to name this best average power. 
cheating a little because I know what I'm going to do, right? And in best average power, I don't see the green. I see these little lines. See, I left it as lines. I'm going to make them thick just so you can see it. But they're kind of behind that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up best average power. But I named it best average power, but my expression only says average power. So, okay. You know what? I'm going to change this color just for the demo. Let's just make this red so it really can see it. So I just named it aver or you know best power by moving it up. Now you can see it's in front because it's this is the order of the you know front to back type of approach. So now I have it nice and up front, and it's in a line. Well, what would happen if I change that to bar? Well, now it all goes red, right? Because the red ones are in front of the yellow one or the gold ones, the yellow ones. But what if I wanted my like I wanted to see the greatest five average powers? for days. So remember, continue to work inside out. So I'm going to put my average power in parens. I want the greatest, I'm just going to use the term greatest average power. And then right in here on the outside of the expression, I'm going to put five. Now look what it did. Because I ordered it, right, I see in red the five greatest average powers and all the other ones are in yellow. So if you notice by just slight manipulation, I actually get a pretty cool chart. It's showing my average daily power and showing me the five greatest. And you could have made that 10 or 20 or whatever number floats your boat. It gives you an excellent way of using it. Now, since I didn't put any range manipulation on this, I didn't use an athlete range, it's using the greatest five of the selected time range of which I'm demoing last 90 days pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, go a little deeper. But that didn't tell me what was this athlete's best five minute power. Okay, so let's think about that, right? Let's add a new data series. And when we talk about best five minute power, we're talking about mean max power. So I'm going to name this MMP five min. I'm going to leave it be a line but I'm going to make that line dotted because it's just going to go from point to point somehow, right? But now because I want to see it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to put a symbol at each one of these. I'm going to make it circle and I'm going to make them large. And I'm going to make them purple. Just picking a purple now. And I'm choosing my color so you guys can better see, everybody watching can better see. Now, where do I get my expression from? So at the core, we want power, right? Okay, well, if I type power, we already know it's not going to do anything. And you notice it, it goes to a different um, axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put power in the paren because we want something with power. And we what we really want, right, is mean max power. So now we have a mean max number, and it's thinking. And look, I'm seeing like a vestige of a curve. It's off the scale right now. Um, so you're just not seeing the whole line. But really, I didn't want all mean max power, right? I wanted mean max power for five minutes. So if I hit comma, and I always use the second count. You could use five colon zero zero. I like 300 seconds. It's just the way my brain works because I'm simple. Now that I have mean max power 300 seconds or five minutes, look, isn't that awesome? I've got all my everyday daily five minute mean max powers. There looks like a pretty good one. There looks like a pretty good one. And there's a couple of these that look pretty high, probably more of them down here than here, right? Well, what if I wanted to just know my greatest five? I'm just looking for what the top five were. Same process, right? Always start from the inside out. Put parens around what you have. Start with that. Now I'm going to use greatest. Then here I'm going to do comma five. And once I do that, you notice my purple lines are now dramatically changed. So I haven't had a greatest five minute in a while, even though I've had greater average uh, powers. My five best average powers have been of recent. My highest five minute power has been in the past. Simple way, you know, some simple data. And this is how you learn, right? You begin to build these systems 
you begin to look at you know analytics and learn the trick is right it's all in the chart building and i get it that certainly can be a challenge now let's say okay that's cool tim but i wanted to know the absolute greatest one so i'm going to copy right and there's two ways you can actually do this but i'm going to copy i'm going to start a new data series and i'm going to paste now you could use greatest one, right? So I can just change the five to a one. Now notice I don't see it, right? Because I have to hover over the series. It's not showing me the greatest one power. Oh, okay. Well, the reality is it could show it that way, but what I'm really looking for, right, is max. So what if I just working from the, now that I'm D or I'm I'm deleting parts of it, right? I'm going to cut the outside part. What I'm really looking for, just like we've shown demos of averages, I might be looking for max power. Oh, and I didn't name it. So let's just say max MMP5. And now if you notice, once I went from the inside out, it says expected something. Expected a closed paren. Notice the disk of that paren. Well, one of the things as you're building expressions is you always need to match. It's like old school algebra. <laughs> you need to match the paren. So I have two facing to the right and only one facing to the left. The warning message is telling me I'm missing one. So I add a second one. Um, oops, I was holding down control. Add a second one. And now it calculates and you notice I have a line because I'm not asking anymore. When I say max, I just want the maximum number, which is 318 watts. But you know what? I don't go back to my point, you know, to discuss this in workouts. I don't want that in my legend because it's never going to change. No matter where I am, right? It's always going to say 318 watts. So I'm going to take that out of the legend. I'm going to make that line dashed. I do want to see it on the scale, right? But I'm going to annotate it. So instead of it being the legend, and now I'm going to say, since it's up top, Maybe I say it is below, so above and below refer to its relationship to the line. I'm going to say below right. And now it's over here so I can see my mean max um, 318. Maybe I really don't want it to scale. I don't want the line. I just want the annotation. Well, you can choose no line and still have it be out there as a piece of usable information. Um, think that gives you some good ideas of the basics of building at the athlete level. Okay, oops, that completes the uh, short lesson. Going forward from this point, we're going to do a series of four to six more advanced demos, get into the deeper chart building and analytics system. Thank you.